Good day everyone. Today I'm going to show you something that I should have done to my 2001 WS6 a very long time ago and I'm finally doing it. What we're doing today is something that we always put off till the end because let's face it, it doesn't really make the car go any faster and that's the brakes. Uh, what I'm going to show you is how to retrofit the large CTSV Gen 1 Brembo brake calipers along with the 14 inch fifth generation Camaro brake rotors that I, these I got from a, uh, EBC and I'm going to show you everything you need to know um, how to do it where to get the parts links are going to be in the description below you're going to leave this video feeling very comfortable doing this modification it's pretty simple it's pretty affordable we're going to go over a couple other quick topics um, there's going to be a, a, another option if you don't have the money to do this there is another way to upgrade the brakes on these cars it's very inexpensive you can't be surprised what it is and i'm going to show you what not to do spoiler alert it has something to do with ebay rotors um, but i'll let you know in a little bit so stay tuned you guys are going to learn a lot and soon you will be on your way to stopping like a more modern car any day now okay so let's show you the goodies this is everything you're going to need to do it um, what you're looking at right here are the 2004-2007 CTSV Brembo brakes. They are four piston brake calipers. Um, I'll show you where to get these. I got them off of uh, eBay. Um, these are, this is just the old hardware. Um, these are the brake rotors. These are fifth generation, so 2010 to 2015 Camaro SS rotors. They are 14 inch rotors. You are going to need some brake pads, so get these to match the CTSV brake calipers. Uh, you are also going to need a pin kit and in this case they came with the brake pads which I highly recommend because they are expensive by themselves. Um, you are also a couple sort of optional things and we'll discuss this in a little bit. It's going to have to do with wheel size and whatnot. Um, you're going to need some sort of spacer most likely to space out your wheels from hitting the caliper and then something that's totally optional is painting decals. Um, these will come silver with a V logo. I'll show you a picture of that. And uh, they look pretty cool, but if your car doesn't have anything with a silver theme, you may want to change the color. I did red with the white Brembos. I think it looks fantastic. Um, one last thing, if you do the wheel spacers, which you probably will, is longer wheel studs. These are ARPs. Uh, they're about 40 bucks for 10 of them, which you'll need for the front. And uh, yeah, those are really good quality. So this is everything, and we're going to go ahead and skip to putting it on the car, what you need to do. Okay, so in this part of the video, I just wanted to show you a couple necessities uh, for things that are gonna uh, make these calipers fit in your car. Um, basically, if you have the 16 inch wheels, you're gonna have to get rid of them, they're not gonna work. 17 inch wheels, you can make work with these calipers, although they require heavy grinding, something myself and most everyone doesn't wanna do. So you will need an 18 inch or larger wheel and a wheel spacer uh, to do this modification. Now I'm gonna show you a couple different wheel spacers and then we will get into the wheel studs. Um, this is a universal wheel spacer. You can get this from any auto parts store. Um, I don't recommend this wheel spacer as it could cause vibration going down the road. This is a way better option. It is a hub centric uh, wheel spacer with obviously the same bolt pattern for our cars. Now the hub on our cars is about 70.3 to 70.5. What that brings me to is the rotor itself. This center bore needs to be opened up uh, to fit over our hub on our cars. From the factory on the fifth gens, it's about 67 millimeters, and we need it bored out to about 70.5. Uh, best route is to bring the old rotor into the machine shop. Um, now as far as the machine work goes, I'm in Chicago, everything unfortunately is super expensive here. I paid 80 bucks to have it done. A lot of you guys out in the country in rural areas are going to pay a lot less than that. I wouldn't go over 80. Um, so let's see the wheel studs that are required. Anytime you put a spacer in a car, you're going to want to do wheel studs. These are ARPs and they're about an inch longer. Um, they're very easy to put in. I'm going to show you uh, a couple of the tools here and how to do that. Um, I'll give uh, an example with using the factory studs since these are already in, but basically they're just going to go in from the back side. Now when they're sitting here loose, what you're going to want to do is get an old wheel lug and put a couple washers on it from the hardware store 
Uh, this isn't welded, it just kind of fused itself on there. Now this will not be used again on the car. This is gonna be essentially a tool from now on. So all you're gonna do is thread it on. Again, if you have an air tool, you're gonna to hit this with the air hammer and it's just gonna suck that stud in. Uh, you can do this manually also. Okay, here as you can tell, I have the rotor that fits right over that hub really nice and snug. It's perfect. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of the uh, wheel spacers and just give you an idea of what I'm talking about with the universal. So this is a universal, they're very cheap. As you can see, this is gonna wobble and it's not gonna fit the hub perfectly. So I would definitely not use this. This is just something I got to test fit. Um, instead, after, after putting on um, the wheel and doing a little bit of measuring, um, I ended up with the, a hub centric, meaning that this is bored out to exactly what this hub is, uh, wheel spacer. Now, this is a five millimeter. Um, you may need a five to 10 millimeter depending on your wheel offset. Um, so it's gonna be kind of a little bit of test fit. That's why I got the universal from the store, just to kind of get an idea of where I was at. That's an eight millimeter. Um, so five to 10 will work great. If you end up going more than five, you're gonna wanna get um, a wheel spacer that has a hub actually machined into it, and I will link that below. They're kind of expensive at about 115. But if you're able to get away with five millimeters or less, you'll notice that there's still plenty of hub left to, for the wheel to slide over. And that's definitely what you're gonna wanna do. Um, so studs, uh, different uh, wheel spacer, and having everything, the rotor board out, is really all we're looking at here. Uh, another thing I wanna show you is that I have stainless steel brake hoses, and I will link um, a couple different places you can get these. Uh, these are really gonna help with uh, pedal uh, feel. It's gonna be a little bit harder and more responsive, so I definitely recommend those. Okay, so what I want to show you now is how easy these brake calipers uh, bolt in. You actually get to ditch your um, factory mounting bracket for the caliper. The threads are the same, everything lines up perfectly, it's really nice. Uh, let me show you how awesome this is. Stock bolts, stock mounting location. So, that's really easy. Um, another thing I want to mention, um, the brake pads are going to go in a little bit different now. They're actually easier. Uh, they're going to slide in through the top here and then you're going to put a, uh, this is for to hold the brake pad in and help with vibration. And then the pins right here, there are two of them, they're going to go in through the back and you're just going to tap them with a hammer and a little punch and they're going to sit uh, just a little bit inside of the hole there. Um, so. You know, this isn't really a tutorial on how to do a brake job. I think anyone doing this modification knows, uh, you know, how to put pads in and stuff like that. But the point of the video is to show you that basically the CTSV Gen 1 brake calipers fit on the F body perfectly. Uh, you're going to bore out the rotor to factory spec, so bring them the old rotor. That's the easiest way to do that. Um, you're most likely going to need a 5 to 10 millimeter spacer and longer wheel studs. Um, other than that, you're talking brake lines, obviously. I'm sorry, brake hoses, obviously brake fluid. I recommend dot four, bleed it out. There are two bleeders on the caliper. You're gonna do the back first, and then this one in the front second. Um, you can paint them like I did. Um, all I did was uh, scuff up the uh, factory silver finish with some sandpaper, and I used the uh, VHT high temp red caliper paint, which will be linked below. Um, followed the instructions, baked them, also cleared them, and I got the really nice Brembo decals off of eBay for like $8. So overall, this is a very nice modification. Um, so what was my total cost? It was about $750 for everything out the door roughly. And again, I'll link it all uh, in the description below. Um, one other thing I wanna mention with this modification is for me, this was a performance modification, but it was also a big looks modification. For 95% of the cars out there, a quality blank rotor with some good pads, maybe some Hawks pads that'll accept some heat and some good brake wood is all you really need to for most all of your stopping needs. Um, I just wanna show you quickly uh, the mistake that a lot of us make and it is to buy these cross-drilled and slotted rotors um, off of eBay. Um, and the reason for that is they look kinda cool but a uh, quick history behind cross drilled uh, rotors is that back in the day the pad compound would make a gas and it would actually cause the brake pad to hydroplane on the rotor. So they drilled the holes in there, released the gas, and it would bite better. 
since then, like everything within the automotive industry, uh, everything's gotten better and the brake pads don't create this gas anymore. But we were left with a really cool looking rotor and the manufacturers went with it basically for looks. Uh, so they're not needed. They actually reduce the surface area. Um, so what I did for kind of a happy medium, I got away from the cross drilled. I just went with the slots. Um, they do help with the bite and cleaning off the pad a little bit, um, but they don't cause cracking like sometimes the holes will do. And they do look cool. So uh, a blank rotor is cheaper, probably work actually a little bit better, but I am going for a little bit of looks on this car. So with that said, I really hope you like this video. If you do, please press like, subscribe. I think you're gonna like some of the contents I put on this channel. There are gonna be a lot of DIY type of stuff on cool cars, uh, along with a bunch of other stuff on the channel. So I hope you like it and have a great day. Thank you.